Yeah. Well, hello, hello, everybody. This is Carlos. I have uh, had to change my plan somewhat today because the Galloping Goose Trail is closed for this section that I normally start from the Bottle Bank. I have to uh, take a little detour here and then join the trail later on. It won't really matter too much. I just have a hill to do instead of a nice flat start. So I might as well just start working on the hill. And uh, I'll probably get back to you in a little bit once I settle into my pace. So stay tuned. This is near where Derek used to live. So I'm back on the Galloping Goose Trail now. The uh, section that they're renovating is the old wooden bridge. The old uh, Swan Lake trestle is being resurfaced. They've already done the little glockenspiel of Zone 4. Calm down, Carlos. They did this other bridge a few months ago, so now they're going to be doing the new section there on the Swan Lake trestle. I'm going to zone three. Try and stay in zone three as much as possible today. Just a few more steps, and I'll start jogging again. Here we go. Zone two. So today I have shopping to do. I've got to buy groceries and stuff that I need. There's a guy coming towards me on an electric skateboard. So I'm 10 minutes in, running along the rail trail on a cool, overcast, but dry day. So the detour was a bit of a setback, but not too much trouble. Just meant that I had to do the hill. Hi. There's another sign warning the cyclists of the upcoming detour. Pretty soon the trail splits. One way goes into town, which is the way I'm going, and the other way goes out towards Cedars Lake and the Trans-Canada Highway, which runs up the east side of Vancouver Island, all the way to Campbell River and beyond. Haven't heard any zone changes just yet. Nothing that I can believe. sound of an e-bike with those big fat tires. I think that is one way they've got round the lack of suspension on a lot of those e-bikes. They just put big fat tires on them. But as you heard, it makes them very noisy just coming up to the big tunnel now. I'm going to cross with a cyclist in the middle here. Yep. There she goes. It's 
This used to be a railway line. There goes another e-bike with thinner tires, more like my one. A lot of people are using them now to get in and out of work. Car is too expensive. Parking is prohibitive. With an e-bike, it's no effort. No, not much effort anyway to get wherever you want to go as long as you can plan your charging the e-bike has pretty much taken over from the moped and the scooter the gas driven transportation of the past has been replaced by electronic conveyance. I'm just going to cross the highway now over the footbridge so I will pause this because it will get noisy. be approaching the red lion pretty soon the red lion hotel and bar I won't stop today even though I have my wallet but that's for later for my shopping expedition Today I should be able to get to the far side of the Selka trestle before I start heading back. It's going to be about uh, just over five miles today. I was kind of hoping it was going to be nice and quiet but the sound of the city can be heard not too distracting but compared with the silence of Mount Douglas it is noticeable and quite a bit noisier Ooh, and smellier You're smelling mainly diesel now. Most of the gas driven cars have cleaned up their act. But the diesel still puts out a fair amount of pollution. Today is midweek, so there's a lot of garbage truck activity going on. on the Tolmy Avenue crossing pretty soon I'll be getting out towards the Gorge Waterway and the quieter section Thank you. Car gave way to me. Unprovoked. This used to be a heavily industrialized area, but now it's basically quiet because a lot of the industries have closed down. There's still a few warehouses. Time 
658 per kilometer, I can believe, but the heart rate, not so much. Let me just adjust it on my arm. The strap occasionally shifts a bit and I don't get good contact with my skin. Anyway, if it proves to be unreliable, I will just ignore the heart rate data. Zone 1 is a little low, but I have just adjusted the strap. I should be in zone 3. There you go. Zone 3. The other day when I ran with Derek, it was zone five the whole way, and it felt fine. Zone three. I guess I was used to that level of effort. There goes another e-bike, and another regular bike. So far it's been almost as many e-bikes as regular bikes. So now the heart rate seems to be more believable. It is annoying when you can't rely on your stats. There's no point having stats if you can't rely on them. I can believe. I tend to get excited for two reasons. One, when I'm recording, and two, when I'm on the flat. So I kind of push the effort up because I don't have the hills to slow me down. Zone three. Zone three. One, two, three, four, five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'm off again. I was saying to Norma, it would be pretty hard for me to run zone two, but if I could manage it, I could probably run 50k in zone two. Whereas in zone three, I would probably get quite tired towards the end of hour two, which only would get me halfway, not even halfway. It's a young mother running with her baby in a baby jogger. Zone four. Zone four. I am coming up on the painted bridge. I will be going under that in about a minute. Thank you. It's good when people do ring their bell to let us know they're behind us. All right, zone three, and I'm off again. Zone two. The Sikh are very health conscious. They're often out hiking and walking. A lot of the Chinese people do the same. They have this ethic. Zone five. Time 25 minutes. Average heart rate 127. Workout average pace 7 minutes 1 second per kilometer. 
There goes an e bike. As I walk under the painted bridge, there's some street camping going on here. Some rough sleeping, I should say. Hi. Nobody here at the moment, just garbage. are catching up with me. Better get going. As I get close to the bridge in zone two, waiting for three and the inevitable four. There is a drinking fountain at the far end which I will take advantage of. That's where I'll make my turn. It's incredibly hard to dial back the effort after 20 years of pushing the envelope. Zone 4, you see. But I guess with my long term plan to be running into my 90s, this is one way of doing it to keep the heart from stressing itself too much. There is a limited amount of adaptation that you can make. I mean, it's fine if you're young. You can push the envelope and get better. But uh, when you're old, all it's going to do is cause major health issues, which will probably prevent you from running later on in life. Very soon I'm going to be stepping onto the wooden plankage of the Selkirk trestle. Zone three. Right here. You can hear the sound change. Zone four. Zone four. Might as well take a nice picture from here. No, I don't believe. Hello. Okay. So I'm off again. Just to coming up to the turnaround. See, my heart recovers quickly when I stop, so it must be doing some accurate recording but I'm not so happy about it peaking so much. This is a pretty flat route. There shouldn't be any major reason for the heart rate to go up too high. This is a bit of a ramp. This is where the, the boats can sail under the trestle and there is also the option of opening this section for the tall masts. Oh, 
Hello. How's it going? Not bad. That's a nice bike, that one. Oh, yeah, thanks. Have you been riding it a lot? <clears throat> uh, I got it maybe a month and a half ago, six weeks ago. I think maybe I put 700 kilometers on it. So That's pretty good. Do you use it to go to work? Yeah, I use it to go to work, but also on the weekends I go for Auto little cost. explorations or whatnot. Or yeah. on the weekend. I've seen a lot of couples with one guy on the e-bike and the woman either running or riding a regular bike. So okay, to help mixed, them train or something? Well, mixed ability groups. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't go running with my wife, cause, well, I could, mm-hmm. and I do, but those people who say, oh, she's too fast for me, or he's too fast for yeah, me. Yeah, no, it equals things out. And, like, and when you arrive, you're not tired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like for me, in my 20s, probably I, I could ride to Souk and back, no problem, but I can't do that anymore. And, um, I kind of don't want to do it anymore, <laughs> no. No. because it's not, for me, it's more about just getting outside and, yeah. you know. Well, I gave up my driving license about four years ago, and I use it now instead of a car. Oh, do you have an e-bike? Or? Yeah, I have an e-bike. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. I've got a Surface 604. Oh, okay. It's not the same. It's, it's got the battery on the on the down tube there. Okay. But the the actual engine is in the rear hub. Oh, okay. How long have you had it for? Two years. Two years, yeah. I love it. I love and the it. battery seems to be... It gives me about eight, 80 kilometers if I use a fair bit of pedal power as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That sounds... About 80k. Sounds similar to what, what I got. Which is half a week's worth normally. Hi there. Morning. Yeah, I love it. And yeah. I've noticed more and more e-bikes. Today, I've seen about the same number of e-bikes and regular bikes. I know, they're really exploding, eh? They've Should taken over from money. the moped and the yeah. scooter. Well, that's good. So the people who used to be riding into work on their on their little scooters are now using e-bikes. Yeah. Well, I think it's good it's to on. just you know even if you're you know got pedal assist, it's good to move your legs around and stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Plus, you get to breathe some fresh air and stuff. Get yeah. away from the cars. That's the yeah. nice thing about this trail. The cars aren't allowed anywhere it's near it. Yeah, I live uh, up by the Galloping Goose. Um, near the hospital. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just get on it and go the other way and go to Soup. Yep. Or, you know, Matheson Lake. That's um, nice. Yeah. yeah well, I, I live in Gordon I Head, so I'm kind of midway. So midway. Like, I live in Gordon Head, so oh, okay. I'm midway between downtown and, and Sydney. Oh, okay. That's a nice ride, too. Up to Sydney is beautiful, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did that the first weekend I had the bike. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hit the water fountain okay. and turn around because I'm I supposed to be doing... Uh, five miles today. Oh, wow. From Quadra to the water fountain is 4K. Okay. And another 4K back, that's 8K. So 8K. is five miles. Yeah, that's a good... That's a good it's a nice run. It's about an hour. Yeah. But I have auto-pause on my app, so if I stop to chat, the clock stops. <laughs> okay. Which is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. Anyway, I'll see you later. Nice yeah, have a great ride. There he goes. On his Time bike. 30 minutes. Average heart rate 129. Workout average pace 7 minutes 13 seconds per kilometer. You see, the average pace and the average heart rate is quite acceptable, but when it peaks to zone 5 and zone 6, I'm not so sure about that. It could be that it's just a little too sensitive. It might not be misreading, it might just be reading in a very small time frame. Anyway, I'll take a drink here and then head back. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna catch up with a runner on the way back. I just saw him go by now. So heading back, the zone two I just heard, back up to the wooden bridge. The Selkirk Trestle. I heard his own fall, but I'll ignore it just now. Nope, I won't ignore it. This uphill ramp will definitely keep it in the higher zones. I might as well let it drop again.
Okay, this is where I was chatting with the man and his bike. The other thing about the heart rate is that it could be that I didn't sleep well, which is true, I didn't sleep well. There goes the noisy e-bike with the fat tires. Yeah, that could be it, you know, just not particularly well rested today. Plus, the heart can accelerate quite quickly and calm down very quickly, as we've noticed. Half an hour in, it should have stabilized by now. Uh, we'll see. I'll try and keep it as low effort as possible. I don't like having to stop every now and then. I'd like to stay in zone three. I... Zone three. I find it easier to gauge my effort level when I'm running hills, funnily enough. Because I anticipate the hike sections. That's what I'm saying, I'm anticipating the hike sections. So I'm cutting back and then hiking on the flat. It's kind of a little disconcerting. Zone five. You see, it went up and then it kept going up. Strange, strange but true. Zone four. I don't think I'm running any harder than I normally run when I run with Norma. Zone two. It was about half an hour. Half an hour for my first 4K, which is pretty brisk, I guess. Four, four sevens are 28. Zero. Now, that I don't understand. Let me see. Okay. Well... I remember once before when I was getting mixed messages from my machine that I looked at the device and it was blinking with a mauve color. Normally when it's giving me accurate readings, it beeps blue and then when the battery starts to get low, it turns sort of a mauve color, combination of red and blue, I guess. But uh, those are the colors. I, red means off, basically, potentially about to switch off. Blue means it's reading. Purple means that, that the battery is low. So. I guess I just need to test my battery strength, make sure that it's fully loaded before I leave. But there you go. Yeah, now it's blinking red, so I think that's what it is. It's just a low battery. That's what's freaking me out. So, I'm turning off the heart rate strap. Now I will only get um, 
distance and pace. Distance and pace reminders without all these wrong messages that I'm having to try and interpret. Well, I guess seeing as my heart rate monitor issues have been most average heart rate 133 most of the uh, chat today I should really call it something to do with heart rate anomalies something along those lines with a question mark Well, I mean, monitors are a lot better than they used to be. Oh, sure. yeah. So, I have about 2.5k to go now. About 15 minutes, maybe, at this kind of pace. There will be the sporadic heart rate summary as it starts to average back from the last available data. the road crossing, Kelvin. I'm going to take a picture of the changing colors here. So, I got a nice picture of a maple tree changing color, which reminds me of my friend Brad in New Brunswick. Thank you. He is the guy in the home of color change. New Brunswick is famous. They have leaf viewing tours organized in the fall. I think what it is is they have the cold wind coming in and then you have those freakishly warm days so the trees get different exposure to temperature so their pattern of leaf color change is more uh, random, I guess. That guy was going to stop for me, but then he realized he had plenty of time to get across. And I had plenty of time to get across without stopping. Hello. There's that mama again with her baba in the stroller. Bunch of cyclists. Coming back to the big acoustic tunnel. Then I'm going to have to negotiate the detour once again. I have been running the pause button today a fair bit. Whoop. 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 It 
definitely has been a run of anomalies. First of all, the bridge resurfacing detour. I then all those stupid issues with the bloody heart rate thingy. I guess if you look at it in the big, from the big point of view, the large picture of humanity, that is why we developed the way we did. Because we have the ability to deal with anomalies. Plan B is hardwired into our brains. This is the clock. The one time wooden planked bridge, which has now been covered with the same material that I can see that they're using on the large trestle bridge. So, I guess I should this opportunity to end this recording before I get too messed up but still further anomalies so this is the running jackal so keep you on a less than normal Wednesday. Bye-bye.